When orchestrating the conquest of alien worlds, the Imperial Dalek faction, in contrast to its counterpart, the Renegade Dalek faction, were known for relying more on infiltration operations than direct assaults, perhaps as a result of their Emperor Davros having a more subtle approach to combat strategy than the incumbent Supreme Daleks that led the Renegades. Throughout their appearances in TV stories, novels, and Big Finish audio dramas, the Imperial Daleks are characterised by their clandestine operations, and only resort to direct assaults when no other options are available to them. From their creation in the secret catacombs of the Tranquil Repos facility on Necros, to their attempt to hijack the Battle of Waterloo and corrupt Earth's history, to their sinister infiltration of Coal Hill School in 1963 during their search for the Hand of Omega, Imperial Daleks are essentially the sneaky Daleks, while Renegade Daleks rely more on direct confrontation. This is seen in Revelation of the Daleks when they invade Necros to capture Davros, in the Juggernauts when they attack the colony on Lethe to destroy Davros's new experiments, and of course in Remembrance of the Daleks in which the Renegades launch a full-scale attack on Coal Hill School and deploy their forces to occupy Shoreditch. According to the Seventh Doctor, the Imperial Daleks were known for conducting operations with limited numbers, usually just a single Dalek, which is referred to as an operator. The most prominent example of one of these operators that we have seen on screen is the operator in charge of the Coal Hill School operation, which usually kept itself hidden in the basement of the school, protecting a transmat unit that it could use to summon reinforcements, and used insidious Dalek technology to enslave the headmaster of the school, Harvey Parson, by installing a device behind his ear that forced him to obey Dalek commands. Using Parson, the Imperial Dalek operator was able to secretly search for the Hand of Omega without rousing suspicion. Upon arriving in Shoreditch, the Seventh Doctor immediately suspected that there was something awry going on at the school, and he and Ace entered the school to find out what was going on. The Doctor encountered Parson, who initially thought that the Doctor was there to apply for the caretaker job, and seemed set to refuse the Doctor's request to be allowed to look around. However, the operator ordered Parson to allow the Doctor access, hoping that his curiosity would lead him down into the basement and into the Dalek's grasp. This is exactly what occurred. The Doctor and Ace went down into the basement and accidentally triggered the Dalek transmat, summoning another Imperial Dalek to the school. However, the Doctor was able to rewire the transmat to create a malfunction with the Dalek teleportation technology, destroying the Dalek. He explained to Ace that the Daleks would be able to eventually fix the transmat, as there was likely an operator nearby who had been placed there for this exact purpose, realising only at that moment that there was another Dalek in the room. Screaming its battle cry, the operator emerged from the shadows, and the Doctor and Ace attempted to flee up the stairs. Ace got out, but was intercepted by Parson, who knocked her out and locked the Doctor in. The operator effortlessly glided up the stairs, relishing its victory, but Ace quickly came to, incapacitated Parson, and helped the Doctor flee. The operator blasted the door off its hinges, but by then the Doctor and Ace had gone. The operator and Parson prioritised repairing the transmat, while Ace and the Doctor fled to a nearby military vehicle, intent on securing heavy weapons to destroy the transmat for good. Armed with an anti-tank rocket launcher, Ace and the Doctor re-entered the school, and the Dalek operator rounded the corner, screaming like a banshee and firing its weapon wildly, as the Doctor and Ace ducked under a table. Thinking quickly, Ace armed the anti-tank rocket, took aim at the Dalek's eyepiece, and fired, obliterating the top section of the operator. Despite the heavy damage to its casing, the Doctor warned his allies to avoid it, suspecting that while the casing was heavily damaged, the mutant creature inside may not be dormant yet. Although the operator was destroyed, Parson was still under Dalek control, and he managed to repair the transmat to allow other Imperial Daleks to arrive at the school, before later being killed by his Dalek masters when he failed in his task to extract information from the renegade Dalek agent, Mike Smith. Although the transmat was later destroyed permanently, the Imperial Daleks simply defaulted to their backup plan, a direct assault with a Dalek shuttlecraft packed with Imperial Daleks and a special weapons Dalek. The rest, as they say, is history. What do you think of the Imperial Dalek Operator? Did you notice that this Dalek's voice changes during Remembrance of the Daleks? During its first appearances, it is voiced by one of three Dalek voice artists, either Roy Skelton, John Leeson, or Royce Mills. Does anyone know which one? But during the scene when it attacks Ace and the Doctor and is destroyed, it is voiced by Brian Miller, husband of Elizabeth Sladen. Since Imperial Daleks are known for their singular operator clandestine infiltrations, do you think that there could be other Imperial Daleks lying dormant somewhere out there in the Doctor Who universe? Do you think the remains of this particular Dalek operator are still located located on Earth somewhere, locked up by units in the Black Archive perhaps, or maybe in the hands of a private collector like Henry Van Staten. What other individual Dalek units would you like to see covered in a future video? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the Dalek Bumps.